you guys did not like a, our re were wrong video. Our i5-8400 results were a little disappointing to many of you, which I can totally understand. They were anomalous to us, but the thing is, when we were testing everything, there was no anomaly in the system. The CPU cooler was working, working perfectly fine. Temperatures were in check. All cores were boosted up to 3.8 gigahertz. During the testing, the RAM was perfectly as fast as it would, could go. There was literally no, no obvious evidence in it whatsoever to explain the worst results of the 8400, besides the fact that the 8400 just performed worse. But because we know that many of you didn't like it, and we partially didn't like it as well, we're gonna take a deeper dive into it and to see if we can fix it. We're going to retest it with the GTX 1060. We've got the Palette Jet Stream right over here, and we're gonna plug this back in, and we're gonna test it again. We haven't touched the system since that video. We're just gonna try it one more time. But then we'll change up a few different things, like the motherboard, we'll swap out from this B360, uh, I think this is the mortar, or titanium, and then we'll swap it over to a Z370 ASUS Prime to see if the chipset's gonna make any difference. Then we also bought an i5-8600K to see whether or not it's the cores or the clock speeds that's potentially holding the 8400 back. And if at the very end of it, we still haven't figured it out, we're gonna swap this 1060 out for a GTX 1080 Ti, also a pallet jet stream, to see if it's the card that's really what the, the big difference driver is here. Because there's a whole lot that's unanswered with our results, but we can guarantee, because we tested it over and over again, we have it all screen capped. There was literally nothing wrong with the system. Everything was fine. So we'll just, we'll just chalk it up to, uh, we'll figure it out. So come along with me to join the journey. One of the main differences between this systems that I can see is the fact that this B360 motherboard only supports RAM up to 2,666 megahertz while the Ryzen tests were done at 3,200. However, all of the things that I know about Intel overclocking and Intel's performance it basically has very little to do with the RAM performance, but that's also why we're gonna try to isolate that by switching over to the Z370 uh, motherboard so that we can actually get faster RAM for the 8400 and see if that makes a lick of difference in terms of the performance. All right, it's time for us to set the memory. So we're just gonna set that to the highest possible. It's 2666, it'll auto set everything else. It'll make sure that the RAM is fine. We set we auto set the RAM to its rated speed, which was 16, 18, 18, 38. And that's the same uh, timings that we use with the Ryzen system. All of this is just gonna be set to auto and then we're gonna load into it. And for anybody who might be expressing, well, Brett, you have to lock everything down. Well, first off, we didn't lock everything down with the Ryzen system. And if you have to lock everything down in order to get the best performance out of the 8400, that kind of just proves the point of the video and that you need to tweak things in order to get it to the point where it can match Ryzen. I don't think that's the case, but we're gonna go ahead and retest everything anyways. So first up, let's go ahead and pull up the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark because that one was one of the, the biggest at 11%, and then there was also Assassin's Creed at 18%, which absolutely got wrecked. We're also gonna pull up all of the hardware monitoring information that we need in order to check out what's going on, which is the same thing we did with the Ryzen systems, because that mean like we can actually keep track of what's happening here. You can see they're all at 3.8 gigahertz right now, all four cores currently right there, sitting there. The temperatures are perfectly fine, 48C. There's no issues with the, the set. Okay, everything's set to what it's supposed to be. We got the high quality for profile. We have DX11 set up. This is the exact same benchmarking, so it's not any different. That's the most important thing, is not, oh, these aren't realistic settings. Nobody uses DX11 anymore. It's just, we are trying to make sure that nearly everything is identical to what it normally is, and that's what we have here. So we're gonna start this benchmark, and then we're gonna come back to what it was, because the original FPS average was 53, with a 1% low of 22, and a 0.1% low of 21. There we go. So we're not gonna take a look at what uh, Ashes of the Singularity tells us, but the average FPS here is 53 FPS, 1% lows is 22, the 0.1% lows was slightly worse at 19. Again, nothing is different. These are the exact same results that we got. If you look at the temperatures, we peaked at 61C on the package. That's not hot enough to do anything. We're still running about 3.8 gigahertz on all cores, even with the game running right now. There is nothing that is going on here that would indicate that there is anything different. We're not maxing out at RAM, but if you take a look, we were maxing out on all six cores. The six cores just aren't good enough. So let's go ahead and run that, and then I'll swap over 
to the uh, to the task manager to show you that all six cores are super limiting. The eight threads on the 2400G did not run into any of these issues. Having those two extra threads actually meant the difference between 53 FPS and 61 FPS in Ashes of the Singularity. It was only in the games that had less of an impact where it wasn't as big of a deal with how many uh, cores the game needed to utilize. So right now we're running this. If we take a look, we're maxing out all six cores all six cores at 100% utilization. This was not happening on the 2400G. So I basically just showed you guys that this this like this is verified. Like the, the CPU is struggling to keep up with the 1060. Just facts, that's how it's working. So now let's go ahead and change a few things up. So the first thing, that I would like to change up is I'm going to change the motherboard out for a Z370 and we're gonna keep the RAM that's there. This is only 26, uh, no, this is 3200 megahertz RAM. So we're gonna keep it at 2666 to see if that makes any difference. And then we'll do 3200 to see if that changes anything. If it changes something, then we know that it's possibly a RAM issue, but I don't think it is. I think it's the sheer amount of cores that are on the 8400. And then eventually we'll switch over to the 8600 to see if that the extra clock speed can maybe alleviate some of these issues because 3.8 gigahertz is slower than what the uh, Ryzen systems were basically boosting up to. Not, not completely, but like that, that puts it on a clock speed comparable to what Ryzen has. So let's, let's go ahead and swap that out. So the benchmarks are exactly the same. There's no difference here. The only thing that I could potentially think might change is the fact that we don't have an IO shield on this B360. So that probably can account for at least uh, five of the FPS that is being lost here. So we, we basically just verified that everything we tested is, is repeatable, it's replicating. We can actually get the same results no matter how many times we run it. So now let's actually talk about the argument of, well, Brett, of course the Ashes of the Singularity is gonna suck like that. It's a CPU bound game. The thing is every single game we tested was worse with the 8400. Every single game we tested was maxing out the CPU for the 8400. I don't know how to more cohesively prove it to you besides the fact that like it has happened multiple times in every single test that we've ever done with this 8400 and the fact that it's like, it's just, it's replicable. We can replicate it. Doesn't look like I forgot to plug anything in, so we're good. There we go. And that's just, yeah, new CPU installed, that makes sense. We'll just verify everything in these settings. So the multi-core enhancement is turned off. We'll turn it off and then we'll turn it on to see if that makes any difference. We're also gonna run it at 2666 again. That seems to be carried over and it looks like the, the timings might be carried over as well. They're not, 18, 38. And we'll save that. And then let's boot into Windows and give it another go on the testing for Ashes. So we'll just keep a look on everything here. We have 3.9 gigahertz, which is 100 megahertz higher, which automatically shows us that the CPU is performing better on a higher end motherboard. Options, let's just make sure the graphics are set up correctly. Yep, totally fine, exactly the same. And let's go back to the benchmark. Let's, uh, let's uh, run the test, my friends. And keep in mind that this is with multi-core enhancement off on this motherboard, so we'll see what the initial results are. My guess is that they're basically gonna be the same, nearly identical. All right, so we hit 69C, a little bit hotter, but we could see that again, 3.9 gigahertz is where we are as far as the actual um, CPU performance. We're, we're also still maxing out the CPU clock, but with that higher speed, it makes a little bit of a difference. So 74 FPS average on the Z370, then a 39 1% low, which is 17 higher, and then it is 29 0.1% low, which is eight FPS higher. This is phenomenally faster on the Z370 motherboard. Uh, it was the B360 motherboard that we used for the system. It appears that that was slowing us down so much. That extra 100 megahertz seems to have made a pretty decent difference. Again, the same RAM speeds, everything else is exactly identical, except for the motherboard, which has better cooling on the VRMs, which has a better power phase delivery, which allows it to get a higher boost clock. Let's go ahead and test everything with the multi-core enhancement on and see if we get even more FPS or if we get worse FPS, let's see what that changes. But basically, I mean, that's very clear evidence that the B360 slows things down.
Okay, so the benchmarks have come back in and multi-core enhancement makes no difference. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to do this all off camera because it's going to take a little bit of time. We're going to benchmark the rest of the games that we initially tested. We're going to see what type of performance increase we're getting from the Z370 over the B360. Then we're still going to continue with the 8600. We're going to put that in the Z370 and then we're going to put this in the B360 and then try to actually figure out is there a performance delta with the 8600K as well with the much higher boost than what comes on the 8400. So that's the initial live portion. We wanted to do it live because we wanted to make sure that you guys knew that we're not screwing anything up. You guys could see everything was gonna happen, but we'll, we'll verify all of the benchmarks and get back to you. We finished all of our benchmarking. Let me walk you through exactly what we did. So you can see that on the system, we have a new cooler on there. It's not the stock cooler anymore. We have new RAM. We tried to change everything up so that we could have I, I, it work the way that it's supposed to. I mean, we even added an RGB strip. We added an RGB cooler and RGB RAM, hopefully hoping that this would somehow increase the performance, but we still got the same old crap, no matter whether we were using the 8400 or the 8600 on this B360 motherboard. The thing that we found out is that this B360 somehow, some way is limiting the CPU. We're not seeing it in the clocks. We're not seeing it in the temperatures. We're not seeing it in the VRM temperatures. Nothing is indicating why this system would be slow. But you can see on the screen right now that when we tested the system with the B360, it got substantially less frames per second to, to the tune of like 10 to 30 in some instances with the i5-8400. And then when we took the 8600K and put it in the Z370, it performed about as what everybody would expect. But then when we put this, put it into this B360, it performed just like the 8400 did when we had it in the B360. So something is up here about the B360. We haven't figured it out yet, but we have found that, that, I mean, the Asus Prime Z370 costs $30 more, but that's how you get the full performance out of your i5s. This B360 was unable to do so, but it's very evident that we didn't necessarily screw it up. It's up, something's up with that motherboard. So it, I, hardware failures, something is strange about all of this. There's no new BIOS for us to test on this MSI one. They haven't released one in a couple months. We'll, we'll see if that makes a difference, if they release one coming soon for potentially the Coffee Lake refresh that's coming out and we can retest there. But then we're gonna do a follow-up video. I think this one's gone on long enough as it is, but we picked up this Asus Tough Gaming B360 Pro to see, is it all B360? Are we experiencing this uh, on B360 as a platform or are we experiencing this on the B360 mortar titanium specifically? That's what we have to figure out. There's no conclusion besides at least this time we didn't screw up. I mean, that's that's my positive takeaway from this is that I didn't necessarily screw up with any of the benchmarking. Tank didn't do anything wrong. We've been able to verify it over multiple different chips and especially after resetting everything, swapping out the RAM, swapping out the CPU, putting a new cooler, making sure that no temperatures are really screwing up here. The, the 1060 palette graphics card is doing perfectly well. We just don't know what's going on. It appears to be something wrong with the motherboard and we'll, we'll do more testing to get back to you guys. So expect another follow-up video on this. We did not plan this. This is not supposed to be a series of apology videos, but it's given us something that we actually want to inspect. Uh, we might even pick up a couple more B360s to see if this goes further down the rabbit hole than we actually think. Uh, I want to know, do, do you guys experience any of this on B360 boards? Is this something that you've seen in other benchmarks? Are you seeing in this your personal system? Let us know down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed it. I, I, I mean, I, I'm super intrigued. I don't know if you guys are. Like, I, I wanna figure this out. We'll spend more time on this. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content, including the follow-up videos. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Cheers. <sighs> RGB's supposed to fix things.